Yeah. I'm Buddy Politan. Thank you for joining us. Get ready. Get set. This is a big hour. It's a big hour, and we're starting big. Um, now, I'm going to preface this once again. Every time I do this story, I have to say it. My sole purpose in covering this story and my sole goal, my perspective, my point of view is just to find out the truth, period. I have no other agenda. I'm not on one side. I'm not on the other side. I'm on the side of truth, whatever it is. And hopefully at some point we will find out and a jury will tell us what the truth is. So I'm talking about the case of Karen Reed. Karen Reed, that's her boyfriend, John O'Keefe. He's a Boston police officer. She was a professor and a professional. Um, they went out one night bar hopping. She then drops him off at a house or he gets out of the car. Prosecutors say she ran him over, murdered him on purpose after she let him out of the car. She says he went into the house and was killed in there and she's now being framed for the murder. That's the story here. She says she's being framed by the people that are inside that house who were other police officers and family members. Prosecutors say she murdered him, ran him over on purpose and left him to die in the cold. So this is the case where we are seeing something we've never seen before. An accused cop killer, even before the trial starts, just dozens and hundreds of protesters showing up at the courthouse supporting her. Take a look. We're not putting up with that. We're right here today, Jim McDermott, and we're not going to be quiet. We got it. And the man leading those demonstrations has subsequently gotten arrested and charged with witness intimidation and some other charges. And he's joining us tonight. Let's bring in our special guest, blogger, social media personality, owner of TB Daily News, and the man who organized the Karen Reed protest, joining us tonight from Worcester, Mass., Aiden Carney, a.k.a. Turtle Boy. Great to see you, uh, Turtle Boy. Um, you were locked up for a while. How long were you locked up? I did 60 days, Vinny, 60, 60 days? odd days. All right. Now you're 60. here tonight. So I've been reporting on a lot of allegations against you and about you. So I want to talk about some of those and have you respond. And, and I want to begin with the relationship between you and Karen Reed, what exactly uh, this is about. Because in an affidavit that was filed by the Commonwealth, they are alleging that... Karen Reed provided to you non-public information using an intermediary, um, a, a woman named Natalie. Uh, you're using the secret text messaging app that terrorists use. Um, you made 189 phone calls um, to Karen Reed, and you spoke to her in excess of 40 hours. And then a woman named Jane, who I believe is your ex, stated that you run everything by Karen Reed before you post anything, before you say anything, you run it by her and you two are kind of in cahoots together. Well, first of all, I laughed out loud when you said that Signal is a terrorist app. It's one of the most commonly used encrypted apps for a reason, because people don't want big brother government coming into their homes with guns taking their devices and reading all their text messages. That's why people use Signal. And the two sources that they have uh, that the government is using, Lindsay and Natalie, are two of the least credible people on earth. And God forbid, Vinny, that a reporter, an award-winning journalist, speak to the subject of his reporting on the phone. Karen and Reed, yes, guilty as charged. I, as a journalist, interviewed several times and spoke with the subject of my reporting. She asked to remain anonymous, and I honored her anonymity because that's what I do as a journalist. If she gave me information on the record, I reported it. If she gave me information off the record, I didn't report it. Mystery solved. This is a uh, an investigation without a crime. 
Uh, this is a pathetic last ditch attempt by the Commonwealth. Uh, they're going down and they know it and they're trying to basically smear my credibility and smear Karen Reed's credibility to try to save themselves, but it's not going to work. Okay. So you're saying, yeah, you were having these conversations, but it's like any other journalist who's going to talk to a source who could be the person related to all of it. I get that. I believe in the First Amendment myself, being a journalist and a lawyer uh, who believes in the Constitution. Um, but were you together figuring out a way to go after people? Was she saying, go after this one? No. Go after that one. I want you to confront this person. Oh, the fantasy world these people live in, Vinny. Uh, no, I, if, you, if you're new, I've been doing Turtle Boy for about 10 years. I existed long before Karen Reed. I do not work for Karen Reed. I work for Turtle Boy, the brand. Karen Reed has absolutely zero control over the content on my website. When I went and I interviewed these people, when I went up to them and asked them, and this is what I'm being charged with, Vinny. I'm being charged with witness intimidation because I asked questions to people who, quite frankly, according to the evidence, appear to have murdered a Boston police officer and covered it up after the fact. Okay, let me, let, me stop, let me stop you there because I, I want to get into that and I want folks to know what we're talking about for those that don't know the story here. Um, you've been charged with eight counts of intimidation of a witness, five counts of picketing a witness, three Nine. counts... Nine counts, uh, three counts of conspiracy to intimidate a witness. Um, I, want, I want you to take a look at this because episode 594 is one of the ones that they cite from the TB news from your, your uh, Turtle Boy Live on YouTube. I want to take a look at a little clip so folks have a little bit of an idea of what they're claiming is the behavior um, that is inappropriate and is intimidating witnesses in this case. Doug, this is not my last trip to Canton. I will be back. I'll be back, Miss uh, <laughs> Miss Boys Regular. I'll be back. Like, get used to this. Like, these people think I'm around. Like, I'm Mr. Internet Guy. All right, so what... The, the language you use, what is, what is the end yeah, game? I'm like, the, the end game that you have in terms of going back... Um, and, I've, and I've watched a lot well, of the clips where you're, you're using language and you're going to make life difficult for them. You, you're going to um, high school games and the, the parents are watching their kids and you're going there. What's, what's the end game to all that? The end game is to ask people questions, Vinny, to, to figure out who killed John O'Keefe and hold these people responsible for it. The end game... What I just said in that clip, this is how much the government lies about this. I was not talking about any of the quote-unquote witnesses there. I was talking about a DPW employee who didn't want to do their job that day. And I made it very clear, if you're going to, they were basically giving me the runaround, and I said, I'll be back next week. I'll be back the week after that. If you don't want to give me these public records, which I'm entitled to as a journalist, I will keep coming back. I was not referring to any of the quote unquote witnesses there. That's how dishonest the government is. The boys regular person I was referring to is the woman behind the desk. She's a government employee. She's not a witness to anything. She has nothing to do with the Karen Reed case. And by the way, Vinny, I was there to find out who plowed Fairview Road the night of January, the morning of January 29th, 2022, because they never interviewed the plow driver. And guess what? Two months later, I found that driver. His name is Brian Lucky Lochran. He plowed Fairview Road at 2.30 in the morning. He went right by the house, and John O'Keefe's body was not on the front lawn. He also told me in an exclusive interview that he saw a Ford Edge parked directly next to where John O'Keefe's body would be discovered three hours later. And he had been interviewed by the FBI about that. And why didn't the state police find this guy? Why didn't they track this guy down? Because they didn't want to track him down. Because his information, his testimony, proved that John O'Keefe was not killed by Karen Reed at 1230 because he was not on that lawn at 230. And since breaking this story in August of 2022, the state police to this day have done zero work to find out who was driving that Ford Edge parked right next to John O'Keefe's body at three in the morning. You know why, Vinny? Because they're too busy 
calling up ex-girlfriends of mine and, and someone named Natalie and finding out how many times I talked to Karen Reed as if that matters. Why don't they find out who's driving that Ford Edge? Don't they want to know who killed the Boston police officer? Because as sure as heck wasn't Karen Reed because there was nobody on the lawn at 2.30. That's what I was doing in that clip. Actual journalism that no other reporter is willing to do and no police in this case are willing to do. All right, let, I'm going to show folks another clip um, that was cited again, episode 598. Um, again, this is one where you're talking about Chris Albert um, looking for turtle riders who are your followers. Let's, let's watch it. He's got, this guy's got his head on a swivel. Everywhere now, he's like, turtle riders, where are they? I got bad news for you, Chris. I got really bad news for you. They're literally everywhere. You can't, like, you guys should just stop going out in public. Like, that'd be my recommendation. And it's only going to get worse from here. It's only going to, I did not direct this person to do this. I can't stop them. They're everywhere. They don't like you. Nobody likes you. You guys killed someone. You Like, you literally killed someone. Not you. You didn't do it. You, you raised someone who did it. And, you know, your big bro did it, but like, and you obviously know this and you're helping to cover it up, but I guess you didn't kill anyone. So you got that going for you. So good job, Chris. You just raised the killer anyway. And we're going to get to that too. But he's obviously, when I saw him, like this dude is ready and like looking around, they insist on going out in public. Like, Chris, I know where you guys were today. Y'all were in Agawam, weren't you? I got pictures of you on my cell phone. I got people sending me pictures. You guys were at some sort of little league thing in Agawam. I got pictures of Courtney uh, Courtney Proctor. I got pictures of who was she with there? Um, I forget. There's a whole crew here. Alberts, McCabe's, all you people were there. So, like, ju just know that there will be no life as normal is over, Okay. Life is normal. You had normal for a while there from January 29th till about April, January 29th, 2022 till April of 2023. You guys literally got away with murder. Okay. All right. Let, let, let's, let's talk about this now. Life's not going to be normal for you. you. People are taking pictures. Yeah. You know, you've got all these followers. Um, yeah. Are you concerned that, when, that they're being doxxed? That, wait, wait, wait. I'm just, let me, let me finish the question. Like, right, are you that. concerned? that it can become a dangerous situation and someone would be intimidated from coming forward and saying, listen, I got to get out of here. I don't want any part of this anymore. Because that's what they're alleging here. No, is that I'm you're not, intimidating these folks never, to the point that they will no longer be able to be witnesses. And the concern is, is that uh, the Commonwealth will not be able to either prove their case or witnesses will disappear because people are interfering uh, with, with justice in this case. Where was the elite? There was nothing illegal about what I just said there. I made a comment that you guys are famous. The story has blown up. When you go out, a precursor to what happened there, Chris Albert had gone out to a bar. Chris Albert is the, the brother of Brian Albert, who's, whose house John O'Keefe's body was found on and was never searched by police, by the way, and he never came outside despite being a Boston police officer. And he got he sexually harassed two women, two turtle riders wearing free Karen Reed shirts in his in that bar they were at, and he got into an argument with them. And there All was right, a video, let me first say that any allegations that you make, we have not independently researched okay. or can verify. Go ahead, continue. Well, they got in an argument, and uh, they they there was a video of it, and I played the video, and I was simply making commentary on that video. I said, if you choose to go out in public. This is what's going to happen. It's just a fact. That's not intimidation. When you, you're famous, all right, when famous people go out in public, he's also an elected official in town, by the way, when you go out in public and you're well-known and you're provocative and you're involved in this very shady murder cover-up, what do you think is going to happen? You're, people are going to people are going to call you out about it. People are going to, and if you engage with them, and if that were me, like Brian Albert doesn't go out in public. He's like, I, I would do what Brian Albert would do. It does. I would stay home. I would let me ask you about Brian that. Does. Now that you've been charged, I mean, it doesn't seem like you're holding back now. Are you still going to show up no. at the courthouse? Are you still going to be in the courtroom? Are you permitted to as a condition of your release? Oh, of course I am. Except now they, <laughs> they're bringing around uh, an individual who has a restraining order. Due to One of the witnesses has a restraining order. So they're bringing her to court with them in order to evict me from the courtroom. That happened at the last hearing. I've been to, I leave like five seconds after this because they bring in one of the quote unquote victims. And 
basically I have to leave the courtroom, even though I've been reporting on the story from day one. And that's fine. But of course, I'm going to continue to report on this story. If I have to do it remotely, I'll do it remotely. You're not going to shut me up. You're not going to silence me. And we're going to keep going with this. And at the end of the day, the facts are on our side. The FBI well, let, let me ask you about the facts. This is the one question. And, and every time um, there's a, there's a con conspiracy allegation, we have other cases where people are saying that something else, someone else is responsible and there's some level of conspiracy. When do you believe this alleged conspiracy was hatched, right? At, at, at one point, do they decide, is a decision made that we are going to frame Karen Reed for what we did, and and who's who's there? Twelve thirty a.m. on and who's there when all this decision is made? Twelve thirty a.m. January 29th, two thousand twenty-two. They beat up John O'Keefe, and he was bleeding out, and he was clearly on the verge of dying. And they made a decision that we're not going to go to jail for this. We're going to put him on the front lawn, at right where that woman just left. And we're going to leave him there. He's going to die in the cold. And we're going to Google how long to die in cold at 2.27 a.m. to see how long we have, which Jennifer McCabe did. She did do that. Let, let me ask you this, though. Isn't, isn't the first time the car striking John O'Keefe ever brought up, isn't it brought up by Karen Reed herself the next morning when she responds? No, isn't she the first one to say, I hit him. I, I hit him. No. According to Jennifer McCabe, it is. According to the woman who Googled how long to die in cold at 227, it is. Okay, if you okay. A reliable okay. Okay, so, so yeah. and, and I want to talk a little about, about some of the evidence. So Jennifer McCabe is going to fabricate, it, it, you're, the part of the conspiracy, she's fabricating evidence. How about the tail light fragments that are found? Are, are they yeah. planted? Yeah. When, when are they planted, well, do you believe? Well, I'll tell you one thing, Benny, when the Canton police searched the scene at, at 6 a.m. that morning, they found exactly zero pieces of taillight. And he was missing a, what, size 12 shoe, a basketball shoe. So they found zero pieces of taillight. And there had been about an inch of snow that had fallen at that point. Fast forward to 12 hours later, after about a foot and a half of snow had fallen, and they found about five pieces of taillight. And then on five undocumented trips, undocumented trips to Fairview Road over the next three or four weeks. Trooper Michael Proctor, who is best friends with the homeowners, has known them for decades. We call him the taillight whisperer. He finds taillight every single time. Well, let me ask you this. To Fairview me, Road. So where are they getting the taillight from? Uh, from her car that they took? They, that they from took the from seized her, car? Her so, uh, yeah. so that, and the taillight is broken in this video, you believe, not from striking John O'Keefe? Oh, it's cracked there, clearly. And and when, when you see when it pulls out, it's barely cracked. It's it's definitely cracked. It's like a bulb out. And then later on in Dighton, you see it. It's still, you know, it's clearly cracked, but it's still pretty intact. Well, Vinny, 30, they want 35 pieces of taillight are missing from this thing when it pulls out. Look, look at it when it pulls out. 35, 35 pieces of taillight came from that? Are you kidding me? How dumb do they think we are? And why didn't the Canton police find any of that taillight? They well, found they say they didn't find any on the driveway here. Because it's barely broken, Vinny. They found so you're saying it's broken taillight. after the... I'm just trying to understand how this is going to be yes, argued in, in court. The fact. So it's broken after the fact. Yes. Okay. Um, let me ask you about something else. The nature and the status of the relationship between John O'Keefe and Karen Reed. We've also learned now about, was it Brian Higgins, who Karen Reed apparently shared a kiss with at John O'Keefe's house? Oh, what, but wait, 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 wait. And, and so, uh, and she was angry because John O'Keefe had done something when they went down to Aruba. What was the nature, wasn't there, weren't there problems in their relationship? I don't care if she was having sex with half of Canton. It doesn't explain why he's got dog bites on his arms. It doesn't explain why he's got no bruising from his nose down or has a gigantic right, let me ask you this. in the back of his you head. You mentioned one, one, one shoe is off, one shoe is missing? Yeah. Well, yeah. people get... It's in, in the Alec Murdoch trial, we got to learn about another case in South Carolina, Stephen Smith, and we talked to a lot of folks who talked about pedestrians getting hit by cars. And it was common that shoes would come off in those cases. Is, does that concern yeah, well, you at all? Shoe? 
Where was the shoe? I don't the know. The police searched that they took his body out of there, and is he's, he's wearing one shoe. The other one's Where's gone. Where's the other shoe? Okay. I would look at, personally, if I were me, if I was murder police, I would go in the house where the body was found, but that house was never but searched. They, didn't, they never went you in. You got a dead body on your lawn, the cops are coming in your house. Okay. We've gotten through that. We've gotten through all of this. Um, at this point, right, the last time we spoke, um, I sort of told you, like, maybe pull back from the confrontations a little bit. Are there any regrets in what you've done? At any point, do you feel like maybe you took it just a little too far, you got wrapped up in the case, the emotions took over a little bit, and maybe you said some things or confronted people, maybe not from your perspective breaking the law, but maybe not doing the right thing? My biggest regret is I wish I had better taste in women, Vinny. I mean, that's the, ultimately, that's why, that, that was the 60 days, that's what that was for in jail. Uh, but quite frankly, no, I would do this over again in a heartbeat because this is all protected speech. The First Amendment is on trial here in Massachusetts, the birthplace of democracy, where the First Amendment was created. It is on, it, we have a statute here that says it's illegal to cause emotional harm to witnesses, not physical harm, the threat of physical harm, emotional harm. Vinny, I cause emotional harm every day for a living. So does anyone with strong opinions. Emotional harm is a subjective thing. Anybody who makes somebody else sad has caused them emotional harm. In the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, if you are a witness in a case, you are not allowed to have your feelings hurt according to the statute. Some of the things, I didn't threaten any of those. Those clips you played, where was the threats? Where were the threats? It was just me saying, personally, if I were you, I wouldn't go out in public because I don't All feel right. like getting in arguments with people. Uh, mm -hmm. Aiden, uh, Turtle Boy, I'm going to call you Turtle Boy. We're, we're out of time for tonight. Appreciate you coming on. I know you spent 60 days on the inside. Now you're back on the outside. Um, we're going to continue to follow everything in your case, but obviously when this Karen Reed trial happens, uh, we'll be covering it as well. And I just want to explain to everyone, because every time you invite Turtle Boy onto the show, you know, it's a big deal. Like, there's a lot of controversy, whether it's social media, walking around, people talking to you. Anyone who's accused of a crime connected to a big case that we cover, we will invite on. Very few of them, if any, come on, but you did. So I, I appreciate you coming on tonight and answering questions about allegations because we've been talking about you while you've been locked up. So wanted to give uh, you an opportunity to give your side of the story. Thanks so much, Aiden. We'll talk Thanks. to you again. All right. That's Turtle Boy. All right. Strong opinions. But was he intimidating the witnesses? Is it First Amendment? We'll find out.